Yeah. Okay. Hello, okay. everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depends on where you are now. Uh, welcome to our webinar about uh, global health in Scopy. Uh, as you know, we have been working uh, since the last term uh, in trying to find ways how to can how to include global health in our Scopy Exchange program and how to offer our students uh, the opportunity to learn more about global health, as as mentioned in our Scopy mission statement. Uh, so actually, this webinar aims at trying to introduce to you the importance of global health to our Scooby uh, You know, we have been working uh, since the last term, trying to find. Uh, yeah, and and then we can discuss more the the ways of implementation by the animals and by um, um, and by the students. How can they try to include more global health? Uh, Maybe I forgot to introduce myself and the other uh, people in this webinar. So uh, my name is Amr. Uh, Amr Diyar. I'm from IFMC Egypt, and I'm the Scoopy International General Assistant uh, for this term. We have also here Omar, uh, Scoopy Director, um, and Basma, Scoopy Regional Assistant for the EMR region, uh, Sifrina, Scoopy Regional Assistant for the Asia, Asia Pacific region, uh, Maud, uh, Scoopy Regional Assistant for the European region and Chioma for the, for, uh, the um, uh, Scoopy Regional Assistant for Africa. So we have here all the Scoopy International team. Uh, I say Rodrigo, right? Rodrigo from Brazil, the Scoopy Regional Assistant for <laughs> for the Americas. And we also have a very special guest, uh, which is Clodo. Uh, she is the former um, Vice President for External Affairs in IFMSA for the last term. And she is now uh, the National Officer for, for Global Health in IFMSA Quebec. She's one of the very special people uh, when it comes to global health, and, and she, she already gave a session during a previous Scoopy session uh, in Turkey, if anyone of you was there, about uh, how to include global health in Scoopy. So uh, I'm going to share now my screen with you. Uh, Okay, guys, it appears like <laughs> Amma's microphone has been muted. I don't know if that, uh, that okay. was a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> okay, now he's back. I don't know why, but it seems that when I share my screen, my, my microphone is muted, so I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so starting, starting from the beginning of the presentation, uh, I'm saying that uh, maybe each one of you already hear the word global health, but for those who didn't, uh, it's really important to understand the meaning of global health in order to be able to, to uh, understand what are the responsibilities of, of the Scoopy people, NAOs and layers and even Scoopy members, to implement this strategy. So, uh, starting from the beginning, what is global health? Uh, global health is actually uh, doesn't have a definite uh, definition. It's it's like a subject of, of debate, and there are many definitions describing what is global health. Uh, if we can agree about something, we can agree that understanding global health is very essential for all of us as medical students, especially during this time. Um, so, like, I can proceed with my presentation. Just for a moment. Okay, I don't know why it's not. Okay, so uh, for 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 the definition of global health, like the, the most uh, relevant, the most uh, maybe one of the most accepted definitions, that it's the area of for study, research, and practice that places a priority on improving health and achieving equity in health for all people worldwide. There are also many definitions about global health, uh, but like the most important thing about global health, and which makes it different from international health or public health that it's, it's really multidisciplinary and it has many 
uh, things more than health uh, uh, included in it, like uh, politics, economics, diplomacy, uh, law, and human rights. So it's really a multidisciplinary um, field, and that's why it's really important for all of us to understand what does it mean, so we can know our responsibilities as, as future health leaders uh, to face these challenges. Just to give you more idea about like some examples for topics for global health challenges, uh, we can talk about social determinants of health, which is actually the main uh, theme we're going to talk about during this presentation. We can also talk about uh, communicable diseases, uh, non-communicable diseases or NCDs. Uh, we can talk about health systems, uh, healthcare workforce, environmental health, uh, climate change, uh, and many other topics like maternal health, uh, child health. So it's, it's really including all uh, topics which affects the global health worldwide. Uh, so, yeah, just one moment. Now I really need to proceed with the presentation. I don't know how can I move the slides. Okay. I can just... Sorry, I'm trying to like share the screen for the second time in order to be able to, to move the slides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, after speaking about what is global health and what are the main global health challenges, uh, it can now come the question which is uh, why it's important for us as medical students to understand what is global health and to understand the challenges. Um, yeah, I can now share it. So, um, uh, global health for us is, is not just a speciality. It's not it's, it's not just like uh, one of the specialties that you can um, that you can take as a physician. It's it's more like a, a perspective that asks us all uh, to to look at health in a more uh, social way and global way. Um, so it's 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 really important for any physician to understand uh, the healthcare system he's working in and how he can improve it and it, his responsibility or her responsibility. It's also, as, as it said before, it's, it's really multidisciplinary. It's, it's unique in its ability to tie together everything from economic, uh, economics, politics, human rights, uh, law, and maybe also like, uh, um, like the, the, all, the, all the factors that can affect the, the population health. Yeah, and maybe now we can, uh, we can uh, go to Omar, uh, our Scooby director, so he can talk more. He can talk more about the importance of of global health, more specifically for Scoopy, and why uh, Scoopy should play a role in in promoting more global health between our students. So Omar. Uh, I can do that. Um, I just yeah. hope my connection will not fail, just as, as last time. At the worst cases, I have you, Amr, as my backup. So uh, thank you, Amr, for the introduction to global health. It is indeed very much important for our medical students to learn about global health and to be aware of its challenges. And I even say, as the representative of these medical students worldwide, it is our duty to work on this and make sure all medical students have the opportunity to learn and experience global health and its challenges. In IFMSA, we want to promote cultural understanding and cooperation amongst medical students and all health professionals. We want to give all medical students the opportunity to learn about global health. And we achieve this through the facilitation of international student exchanges, and we offer them, and we offer every student the opportunity to go to other countries, discover other health systems, get to know about other countries' epidemiology, and most importantly, know about global health challenges in the other countries and how these countries deal with these challenges. And I can just take the most recent example we have, uh, that is the Zika virus outbreak in the Americas, and how our exchanges with a lot go to that region, know how they deal with that, uh, and how we.
can yeah and, and how we regen uh, 3Ds so they can go back to the country uh, global health uh, issue in their country very soon nowadays more than uh, 11,000 medical students every year uh, go on exchange on a professional exchange with Scopy to explore healthcare delivery and health systems in different cultural and social settings. Our exchange program are key promoter of intercultural of intercultural understanding and cooperation amongst medical students and health professionals, which IFMC believes uh, is much needed in our globalized world. Um, so these upcoming three exchange seasons, so from 2016 to 2019, uh, we are going to be oriented around one specific global health topic, which is social determinants of health. And I'm going to uh, leave the floor again to Alma to introduce you to that strategy. Uh, okay. Thank you, Omar, for your uh, very uh, good presentation about the, the importance of, of global health in Scopy and why it can be really inspiring for medical students worldwide to, to take uh, to take role on, in, on, in improving their healthcare system and, and like get the most benefit from this experience. Um, yeah, so like just as as a like um, continuation to your presentation, I I had I have this two photos from like this is the beginning of Scopy in 1951 and how like this very small group of people connected uh, uh, in the first general assembly to like try to discuss ideas about how to uh, promote global health and how to um, equip the, the 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 students with with the important skills to face this global health. Uh, and then, like sixty four years later um how how uh, we have more than eleven thousand medical students every year like trying to, uh, traveling to another country and exploring another healthcare system so it's amazing how it's growing year after year um, so yeah uh, uh, regarding the the strategy that we have for uh, for promoting the global health and trying to make it more concrete and specific uh, strategy for all our animals. Uh, we, we actually had an initiative uh, during the last uh, General Assembly in Macedonia. Uh, so it was uh, Lizana, uh, the IFMC Netherlands, Neo Out, uh, ex Neo Out, uh, and me, uh, trying to like um, explain how it can be easy for the NMOs if, if they have one specific global health theme for a specific period, period of time. So it's it can be easier for them to um, to like try to uh, give the information to their students and and give their students information about global health generally and about this specific topic, so they can know how they can uh, what they can observe in other countries. So, like just to explain it in brief, uh, the idea is that the school PIT will will choose one global health theme. It will be every three terms. We we thought this will make it more. Uh, uh, achievable if we have it for three years, not just one year, uh, and then um, the students should, during the pre departure training, should have an idea about about this topic, about global health generally, and about this topic specifically, and how uh, it's um, addressed in their home country, from their hosting NMOs, and then they're gonna travel to the other country to the sending NMO where they can uh, make a presentation uh, about how the system works in their home country uh, and discuss with other students the differences between between their their home countries uh, uh, addressing this specific topic and and like what are the uh, strategies adopted in each country to try to face uh, this issue and, and improve it in each healthcare system and then during the the four weeks exchange, they will uh, explore more the healthcare system of the of the hosting country and try to understand more uh, how the system works uh, in in this hosting country, um, how how they can uh, benefit from this experience when they go back to their um, to their sending country. So it's we we can discuss it more during the, the last part of this presentation about the responsibilities of, of each part, the hosting NMO, the sending NMO, uh, the students, and even the Scoopy International team, and what can they do in order to achieve this strategy in a very, like, let's say, efficient way. Um, but now, like, first, um, 
as you know, that we are going to have one specific global health theme. And in order to, to, to decide the theme, we, we have shared the survey uh, on both IFMSA Scoopy and IFMSA NAO servers. So it's for everyone, for the NAOs, uh, NAOs students, and even any interested IFMSA member. And um, like the, the most uh, the most topic uh, with votes was the social determinants of health and health equity. And actually, the Scoop International team uh, was very like um, in favor of this topic, as it's it's really important for Scoopy, for IFMSA, for the medical students. It can be easily observed like between the different countries and the different healthcare systems. So it's really suitable and relevant for our strategy. Um, yeah, so now we are going to have uh, Clodo uh, explaining more about, about the social determinants of health. Uh, as it's really important for us, like the first step of everything, that we should understand the theme and then we can discuss more the, the techniques and the tools we can use in order to, to transfer this information to our students and, and try to make them more aware of, of how they can they can benefit from the from their exchange experience and understand more about this topic. Uh, so now I, I will give the mic to Claudel, but just uh, I forgot to say something that if you have any questions, uh, you can send it to uh, the email of the Scoopy director of Omar, uh, scoopyd at, at ifmsa.org. So it's S C O P E D at ifmsa.org. Or you can just post it like in the in the tab of the questions and answers if you can find it here in the Google Hangout. So uh, if you have any questions, you can just post them now, and we will have to, we'll try to to answer them all at, at the end of this uh, of this um, meeting. Yeah, just Rodrigo is just suggesting to write the the email here so you can see it. Yeah, so this is the email. If you have any questions, you can just send it to Omar and we will answer it at the end of this presentation, at the end of this uh, webinar. And now we can have Claudel with us to explain more about social determinants of health. So, yeah, you can go. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Um, hopefully, that will work out. Yes, you can see something, right? Okay. Does that work? Yeah, it works. OK. Now my computer froze. Um, so I'm just going to have a short sort of, oh, damn. Um, I'm going to have a short session on what social determinants, social determinants of health are and what they mean for medical students and why uh, it's sort of important that we, we try to integrate it as much as possible in our practice, but also in our training. Um, so as Amel said, I'm the former vice president for external affairs, and now I'm working in, uh, in Montreal um, trying to study medicine and um, working in, in global health nationally. Um, so just want to go back to the basic of what health means. Um, so just the definition of given by the World Health Organization for Health is a state of compl complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And we, we sort of see that as well in the definition of global health, sort of saying that health is not it's not only related to healthcare, but it's something broader and that we also need to consider, and that is something that includes social well-being, so or or env the environment in which we live in. Um, and then we can also ask ourselves, but what sort of what are the factors that determines our health? And and, and at the end, what sort of comes into the equation of, of um, sort of being the addition of what we, we are as human beings in terms of, of health. And so a determinant of health is a factor or characteristic that brings a change in health. And there's sort of four broad categories of those determinants. So we're talking about genetics, so our background coming from our family, what do we have in our genes, um, the environment in which we, 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 we grow in, um, the social environment that is around us, um, and sort of behavioral or, or comportment in society. So those are the four broad categories that are, f are falling into determinants of health. Um, and, and sort of getting, getting into the more specific part, in integrating social determinants of health, um, those have been defined in conditions in which people are born, grow, live, age, work, and the water set of forces and systems shaping the conditions of daily life. And when we're talking about those set of forces and system, 
It includes economic policies and systems, development agendas, social norms and social policies, and political systems. And what this definition really means is that when we're discussing health, we cannot only look at healthcare systems. We need, we need to look broader. We need to look beyond the hospital war, uh, walls and beyond healthcare. And that means where we go to school, where we work, um, where, what we eat, what we can drink, um, and, and those can be sort of, there's this nice graph I think that summarizes well the social determinants of health, but it means that what our health status is not defined by what sort of access we have to healthcare. Yes, there's a part to it, but the broader part includes how much education we get, how many years we stay in school, what sort of work do we do? Uh, do we work in a factory? Do we work? Do we have a stable job or not? What is our salary? Salary? Where do we live? What our house is like? Are we sort of? Uh, is our, our house warm enough when there's cold temperatures? Um, is it resistant to water? Um, are we classified as poor? Do we have access to health insurance, etc.? And at the end of the day, um, our health is really more defined by those factors rather than only our age, our sex, or, or, or our genes, and even more than only the healthcare se services that we have access to. And, and so we, we see in this graph, we started looking at agri agricultural and food production, education, uh, the quality of edu education or access to education, how long we stay in school, um, the working environment, again, where we work, what sort of work we're doing, is it repetitive, is it dangerous for our health, or is it stable, are we stressed by our work, um, our living conditions, our employment status, do we have income or not, is our income stable or not, uh, what sort of access to water do we have, um, is it clean, is it safe, is it fresh, is it far away from our home, is it directly in our home, um, what kind of services in socially do we have access to, um, and sort of where do we live in terms of housing? Um, do we live near a highway where there's a lot of noise and um, air pollution, or do we live in an environment in which air is clean? And so those are really the core of the social determinants of health. And if we were to classify them as what influences our health the most, we would see that social revenue, so our status, economic status, is an education or the two main determinants of health. Um, throughout our life, so we're talking about life expectancy. Um, if I move on to just sort of clarify something, um, there's two types of what we can broadly call um, non-equity in health, so we can say inequalities, and those are things that are more or less inevitable, so we're talking mainly about genetics, and we're talking about equity or lack of equity, we're talking about inequities, and those are avoidable, unfair and unacceptable difference or gap in health that we see because they're a product of social injustice and those are really, really the core of social determinants of health. And this is where we need to act and this is where we can learn and as future doctors this is important to take into consideration because someone we will see in our clinic, if we give them pills because, I don't know, they have diabetes, we can give them pills but at the end of the day, in 20 years from now, is that what's going to change what a person makes why the person is sick? Probably not. We need to look at a broader scale and see why the person came come into our office to start with. Um, and if I move on a bit more, um, we we can try to we we can believe that the knowledge around the social determinants of health is quite old, but the the data around it has come into the ne the past ten years more or less, um, and we've been looking at the distribution of money power and resources in sort of different level, both locally, nationally, and even internationally between and within countries. And the, those, the distribution of money, power and resources are influenced by political choices. So the government we put in place, the social policy that we implement, um, and that can be also reflected in international agreements and national policies. And so those, the, the, the inequities in health that we see are really a, a reflect of the political, economic, and social structure, and more broadly of society and the world. So it comes into very complex, and we can say, how, this is complicated, how we can act. Um, and, and we can also believe that there might be a part that is, 
or if individual responsibility. So can we always blame the environment or, or us as individual? Do we really have a role to play in our health? And, and, and the people who would say, well, we cannot only blame social policy for bad health, we need to, to look into the individual responsibility. So for someone who doesn't look after himself, doesn't put um, his or her children to school, so what, what part is what part individual plays in that? Um, and the data and the research show more and more that the, the social structure in which the individual, individual lives sort of dictates a lot is, uh, is comportment and his decisions to sort of risk factors. So if you live in an environment when you only have fast food restaurant around you, how are you going to be able to make healthy choices in, to, in terms of, for instance, eating a lot of vegetables and fresh fruits? Um, or if the prices of those vegetables and fresh fruits are too expensive for you to be able to afford them, you're going to look for cheaper way to get food. And those are going to be less healthy for you. But is it really a personal choice? Or is it just because the environment in which you are sort of tell you to eat that because otherwise you will have lack money from something else? Same things go for work, same things go for where you live. Um, so again, the social determinants of health, I cannot stress that enough, stress that, that enough sorry, are really the root, um, the causes of the causes. So when you look at the risk factor, why someone is getting sick, but look beyond that, why those risk factors exist, and those are social determinants of health. So we can also sort of see this is a vicious circle. So you have your, for instance, you lack, you have malnutrition, so you lack proper food. Um, it leads you to being more poor, and that leads you to being more sick. Um, and sort of just go into a circle. And again, you can have a better circle. So you have healthy kid, you have a better life, you grow healthy as a kid, so you get a good job, you go to school, you're richer, and eventually you have as well health your kid and etc. So those are two circles that we see. Um, the richer the people get, the healthier they are, the poorer they get, um, the more their health outcome is very poor. Um, so I just want to show you a few graphs and I'm, I'm hoping that these are big enough. Um, but if you look at here, you see the, the inequality in income. So what is the difference between someone who is really rich and the people who are being really poor in a country? And I think the best example for that are USA. There are massive, massive inequality in income into the US. Um, whether, for instance, in Norway or Sweden, um, there's less inequality in income. And what we can see out as a result of that is that if you look at health problems, they tend to be poorer um, in, such, in society that are equal in terms of income and wider in society where there's a bigger gap in income, such as the USA. So those are, are we look at populations, not merely sort of a small community, but we're looking at millions of people, and we see that there's a gap um, where there's income inequalities in income, and as a result, there's inequalities in health. Um, the next one is, is, is from a book I'm currently re reading. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention it in a while. Um, but you, you look at um, under 5 mortality rate um, by, the, the, by five categories of income. So the, the poorest you get, so the darker the, the line are, the more under 5 mortality rate you have. And this is in many, many countries. We're not looking at only sort of low development countries, but we're taking five countries from five different so from different regions around the world, and we see there's there's still the scale. So even for instance in, in a country such as Peru, where they tackle under five mortality rate quite well, there's still a difference between under five mortality rate when you're at the at the poorest in society versus when they're riches. And you can also see that in Uganda, where you will see there's more under five mortality rate, but there's still a gap between the richest and the poorest. And even more, um, another graph shows us sort of, you look at, um, you have four lines. Um, so this is distribution of sort of IQ, so we can say intelligence based on your income. So in the in the pale line, you have to find to low social economic status. And then the um, the dark who are in a high social economic status. And you look at the IQ at, as, at birth and as we grow up. And what we can see is that someone with a high IQ um, IQ, if they're born in social, uh, in the low socioeconomic status, their IQ will tend to diminish 
um, in terms of average position in Dole. Um, and this is sort of the influence of the environment you live in. Whereas someone from a high socioeconomic status, even born with a lower uh, IQ comparing to his age, will tend to surpass eventually um, is the, the people from uh, who were technically more smart than him when he was a young kid. So those are the effect of the environment you, you grow as a child and how it can influence your ability to learn. Um, and the last graph I want to show you, um, it's in French, but I'm going to translate it. it. It is about the city that I'm currently living in. Um, and in red, we can see the difference in, um, in life expectancy um, about the districts you're living in. And this is in Montreal. The poorest people live in, in the red areas. And even above the years, we're talking about a 15-year difference here there's still a gap between where you live and what is your life expectancy. And the latest data show that in Montreal only, there's a difference of about 10 years of life expectancy between the richest and the poorest people. Um, 10 years in one city, and the city is about 1 million people only. So this is a massive gap, and, and the data shows that it is mainly because of the, uh, the inequity in, uh, in socioeconomic status. Um, I'm going to skip that just to get move on with the webinar. Um, but sort of what we learn over the year is that poverty is really toxic to health. Um, and, and we can say that social justice, if, if you dream of, of a world where there's social justice, we need to discuss health equity. Um, and there's also the fact that we can improve health of everyone, everywhere, if we act on the causes of the causes, the social determinants of health. Um, and we've also seen, based on, on income, status, um, education, work, that health is very complex. And it's not only a result of individual choices, but of the environment in which we, we evolve as human. And that we can avoid them, um, and that we can do so by learning about them and by talking about health equity. Um, so there's this report, and basically there's a few recommendations of what we can do. And, and, and during your uh, sort of integrating social determinants of health into your uh, SCOPI program, you will be able to sort of implement sort of those recommendations. So to looking at how we can give every child the best start of life, because we know how crucial the first five years are for development as, as human. Uh, we need to maximize people capabilities um, to have control over their lives, to make decisions by themselves, um, create fair employment and good work, ensure a healthy standard living for all, create sustainable places to live and, uh, in, in terms of community, so the importance of health within community, um, and strengthen the role and impact of prevention in health, so how we can prevent people from getting sick, not only how we can treat them, but how can we make sure that they're not getting sick in the first place. Um, and so disparities in the world result in uh, in the world health result in a toxic combination of poor social policy and program, unfair economic arrangement and bad politics. This is a very bold statement, but that was the the, the sort of conclusion of the uh, report, uh, the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, published by the World Health Organization, that really marks why social determinants of health are so important for for medical students in trainings. Now, getting to the point, why SCOPI and social determinants of health? Um, there is this momentum currently in the world as we move on to the next phase in terms of global development, um, and they're called the Sustainable Development Goals. You probably might have heard about them. There was this big summit in New York last September, and now we move on to a new set of goals that, are, that we are hoping are going to help decrease poverty, increase education in the globe, around the world, and sort of bring uh, a, a better global status of development. And health has to be integrated in that. And as physician, I think it's our role to, to understand the complexity of development, to be able to act and to really help our patients. Um, it is also one focus area in IFMSA globally. So in terms of advocacy strategy, when we go to meetings, when we represent the voice of medical student, we always ask for health equity, and that goes within uh, by social determinants of health. And also, as physician, I think we want to improve the health of our patient, um, and if we, we cannot do so only by, by treating people. We need to look at why people are getting sick in the first place. Um, and so 
social determinants of health are at the really core of any patient health and status. Um, and so it is the role as physician to sort of say, okay, my patient is sick. Why is he sick? What, what can I do? How can I improve his environment so that he's not getting sick? Um, and so finally, I, I, I know this social determinants of health are a very complex subject. Health itself is very complex. So I'm just, just going to suggest you um, two readings. Um, one is the report itself, so closing the gap in our generation, which is very optimistic about what we can do in the world. And one, one part as, as physician is to train students to understand social determinants of health. And the second part is a book uh, written by the current uh, president of the World Medical Association, Sir Michael Marmot, who described in, in about 300 pages all of what I've tried to say in, in less than 15 minutes. So if you have a moment, try to, to look at those two documents. And I, I, I'm pretty sure that I can, uh, I can say with certainty that you will um, even more understand the complexity and the importance of integrating social determinants of health in, um, in our training programs. So I guess that sort of will be it for now for me. Um, I'll be able to take questions if you have, but I'm going to give the floor back to uh, Amar to discuss more um, how we can do that in Scopi um, over the next three years. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Claudel. That was like really an amazing presentation about uh, social determinants of health. So thank you very much. And just to give an idea about how she's amazing, she just prepared it in one hour before the meeting. So <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, Scoopy loves you, and and thank you so much for for this amazing presentation. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you have any questions for for Claudel, you can just. Uh, send it to us and we can send it to her and we can also we will share with you this uh, two amazing readings uh, in our email after this webinar. Um, okay so uh, to proceed now with, with our strategy after we, we had this uh, presentation about what are the social determinants of health and it's it's really important to to understand first um, our theme in order to be able to provide our students with the needed uh, materials and, and skills in order to be able to um, to learn more, yeah. Just one moment to share the screen. So is it working now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So uh, we at the Scoop International team uh, are now working on on setting the the guidelines um, for the Scoop International team for for the hosting animals, for the sending animals, and even for the students. Uh, in order to be able to um, include global health more um, in our exchanges with our theme, uh, Social Determinants of Health. Uh, we are also going to share with you this document about the, um, the guidelines in the next few days, but we just like, think it, it would be a better idea to give you an idea about uh, our main guidelines we are thinking in order to achieve our strategy, so it, it can be more easy for you to, to read the guidelines and understand what, what do we mean by each, by each point. So uh, first, uh, starting with the Scoopy International team, and as this is going to be um, our global health theme is maybe going to be one of of, of our Scoopy strategic plan for the next three years. So maybe it's important for the next Scoopy International teams to know uh, what they should do, and even for you uh, in this term to understand um, what we are going to be doing until the end of this term uh, regarding this uh, initiative. Uh, so. First, uh, we are going to be responsible for selection of the global health theme, which is already done, associated determinants of health, and setting the guidelines for all the uh, involved um, uh, sending and hosting NMOs and students. We are also trying to include uh, global health in, in all uh, the relevant materials and documents, such as a pre departure training uh, manual, the upon arrival training manual that we are still working on now. Uh, the student handbook, as you know, we are, we are now preparing a new student handbook. Um, we are also trying to, uh, even with, with the with the NAO and LEO handbooks, uh, we are also trying to create a database with all the important readings and resources that you might need uh, while training your students in the pre partial training, uh, in the upon arrival training, and even while training your LEOs to to conduct these trainings on a local level with their students. 
Um, and also promotion of, of this uh, global health uh, initiative. So uh, we have many ideas in, how, in order how to promote uh, this initiative uh, through our servers, our Facebook uh, groups, um, through our new amazing uh, website, <laughs> uh, and also through um, the GAs and, and our uh, international meetings and Brits and uh, Nathan Moore's weekend and other meetings that collect uh, Scoopy people worldwide. Um, so we are now working on, on uh, promoting more this strategy and initiative in order to make all nayers and layers uh, and even students aware of, of what we are aiming for. Um, the next thing that um, this initiative is 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 uh, can really can really be achieved more easily and more uh, can be more applicable if we try to include other standing committees involved in our in our topic. So uh, for the social determinants of health, it's it's one of the programs now in SCOF and and it's one of the main uh, as as Claudel just said one of the main uh, like advocacy areas IFMC is working on. So we can include IFMC people. That, like Claudel that, like, uh, that we just have now, we can also include other IFMSA people with us, um, especially from SCOF, to try to help us achieve this strategy within on the international level or even uh, nationally with other uh, in each NMO uh, with the MPOs and LPOs. Um, we are also tr like trying to we try to include it in our new report to try to evaluate this strategy and if if we will need any modification because it's still uh, the first term to try to to um, um, have a strategy for global health. So maybe it, it will be really guiding for us to have your inputs and your ideas in how in order how to improve uh, to improve this uh, strategy. And finally, we are going to to have uh, one or two questions in our evaluation forms for the students in order to try. Uh, to know how they they how how their knowledge about social determinants of health and global health was improved during their exchange on what they are planning to do uh, after going back to their home country. Okay, so after uh, finishing uh, the Scoopy International team responsibilities, we can now um, talk about the responsibilities of the sending NMOs uh, with their outgoing students and the responsibilities of the, of the hosting NMOs with their incoming students. So first, uh, with the sending NMOs, um, it's, it's really important first for the NAOs to learn about global health generally and try to have an idea about what does it mean and, and its importance for the students. Uh, and this is the situation of, of uh, his or her home country regarding Social determinants of health, and more generally, like the, the how the healthcare system works in in the home country, so they can um, explain this information to their students during the pre-departure training. Uh, it's also important to um, transfer the, the materials and resources that we are going to share um, uh, between all the NAOs with your students, uh, with your outgoing students. So, if any of them is interested to learn more about global health and social determinants of health. Um, they can find the relevant resources and materials. And now, like with, with one of the most important uh, parts uh, uh, in achieving this strategy, which is the pre debarsha training. Um, as you know, pre debarsha training is not just important for including global health uh, in Scoopy, it's, it's important for many aspects, uh, including the academic quality, including uh, how the students can have like more ethics in their exchanges, how can they, they benefit more from their exchanges for their future careers. So um, it's, it's important for all aspects in Scoopy. Uh, and more, more specifically, um, we will need to, like, to try to address global health um, in, more, uh, in a more focused way in our pre debarsha trainings in order to achieve this strategy. Uh, so maybe we can you can talk more with your students about uh, what is global health and and uh, the global health learning objectives in in their exchange program. What what is expected from them as as medical students uh, during this exchange program regarding um, the global health learning objectives. And also uh, now it's it's more concrete to to talk with them about one theme instead of just talking with them about all the global health challenges that they should uh, tackle or, or they should face. So now it's, it's really easy to, to talk about one theme and uh, it's not easy, I mean it's, it's more applicable and more concrete to just talk about one theme 
which is one of the most important themes in in the global health. Um, so um, so yeah, it's uh, you can talk about social determinants of health and what are the uh, the capacities needed in in their home country to achieve health equity, and what are the strategies uh, by the healthcare system in order to face this issue in their home country. And also, it's it's it will be really important if if you ask the previous exchange students to share their experience with with the, with the new outgoing students, especially if they they already went if they already have been to the same country. So, like for example, if a student has been to Canada and then uh, this year there's a new student going to uh, to Canada, so it's it will be really um, important for for the new outgoing student to have the experience of the of the previous exchange student. Yeah, we, we we can have more details about the pre partial training in in the manual and and in our guidelines. We are just trying to give you an idea in in like the, the main points that should be addressed in the pre partial training. For the hosting, uh, for the hosting uh, NMOs or the hosting local committees. Uh, so it's it's now um, one of the things that we are working on during this term. It actually started the last term, but we are focusing more on during this term. Is the upon arrival training, uh, which is the same as pre departure training, but in the hosting NMO. So as soon as the students arrive in their hosting NMO, they should have a training about how their exchange would look like during their exchange program. It's also important on, on many, many aspects, not just global health, but global health um, or our strategy to include global health in SCOPI can be achieved without having this upon arrival training. Uh, we are also working on the manual for the upon arrival training and it will be um, shared with you very soon. So in, in this upon arrival training, um, the hosting nay or the hosting lay should be talking about how the healthcare system works in the country and and what are the main challenges facing the healthcare system. Uh, more specifically, talking about the social determinants of health. What are the most important uh, capacities needed to achieve health equity in in, in the hosting country? And also uh, to make it more interesting for the students, uh, it's it's really important for the. Um, for the exchange students themselves to share uh, to share their uh, presentations about their home countries and to discuss between each others uh, how uh, their home countries uh, address this uh, this issue what are the the the, the most important uh, capacities uh, needed in each country to achieve health equity and and what what's each country position regarding this uh, this issue so it's it's really important for the hosting and the most uh, uh, to understand and know how to moderate the discussions between the students and how to encourage the, the students to talk about their knowledge opinions to ask any questions they might have uh, what are the expectations uh, they have for for this four weeks exchange program so um, yeah to proceed with the next point uh, it, we are also like uh, trying to give this, the, the, the exchange students an idea about how the healthcare system uh, looks like in the in the hosting country. So uh, uh, we thought about what are the the, the platforms where where the the hosting names can share this this kind of information with the students. <coughs> Sorry. So we have our amazing support pages uh, that the names and these are now working on uh, on our website. So there is a section in the acceptor pages which is uh, the healthcare system. So it can be really amazing if, if the names and these can share in this section um, a very uh, summary of, of what's happening in their country regarding the social determinants of health and how um, health equity can be achieved and then like what are the strategies and, and uh, the capacities they are working on now. Uh, we also have uh, the incomings, uh, the incomings guide, guide, guidebooks. Uh, some, some animals already have this, uh, a guidebook for, for their students to understand more about their social program, their academic program. The universe is available there. So um, it would be really nice if they can also include uh, how the healthcare system works in their country and what are uh, the social determinants of health. <coughs> Sorry again. Um, and also uh, welcome emails uh, to students uh, with, the, with the most useful resources and materials. It's the same 
as uh, the sending NMOs. I know that many NMOs m might be already working on this. Uh, we have some NMOs uh, approached us during the last August meeting and saying that they are already uh, having some strategies regarding global health and they are already working with their incomings and outgoing students for this. But the idea is that we would, we are trying to make it more uh, more international between all the NMOs uh, to give all the students going on exchange this opportunity and not just for for like three or four NMOs. Um, okay, so um, for, for for also for the hosting NMOs, how the lanes should be also in in continuous uh, contact with their students. Uh, and how can how should how should they work uh, with their students to increase their awareness about social determinants of health <coughs> and follow up on their daily work in the hospital? Um, yeah, and and also how can they encourage the students to be in contact with doctors, nurses, and patients? <coughs> oh my God, I'm talking too much, so maybe that's why. I'm sorry. Uh, and how can they encourage incoming students to participate in the public health conferences or campaigns uh, working on the global health in, the, in, the, in their country? Okay, just now with the last part with the students. Uh, students will be, like, if, if the hosting and sending NMOs are really paying attention to, to these points during their pre-debarsha trainings and upon arrival trainings. It will be really easy for the students to, to learn about global health. Um, and just miss the point uh, during the pre-debarsha training and upon arrival training. <coughs> it might be really uh, useful for us and help, uh, useful for you and helpful for you on the national level to um, maybe try to approach the, um, uh, the the MPO or the LPO in your country or maybe even uh, approach the public health department in your in your university uh, we are also going to take to talk more about this uh, with Claudel as they are having like uh, a very um, good strategy to cooperate with with their universities in in Quebec uh, so so maybe we can talk more after after this with Claudel to share with us uh, her experience with this. So yeah, you, you can just think of of, of organizations, NGOs, universities, uh, public health department, NPOs, uh, or whoever you think can be helpful in in uh, delivering this information to the students. So yeah, for the students, for sure, it's important for them to like create the resources and like understand more about global health and the social determinants of health. Uh, work for the presentation they can uh, do on their arrival during the upon arrival training and and try to explain uh, in a very good way about the healthcare system in their country and the social determinants of health. Uh, it would be really amazing, like to have to have students from China, uh, um, Middle East, uh, maybe Canada, Europe, like different countries sharing their experiences. So it can be really inspiring for other students. Yeah, and uh, how how can they gain their, this this kind of knowledge during their exchange in the hosting country? So, like an example, some some examples of how they can gain this kind of information. It's to observe, like observe as much as possible during their exchange. Besides gaining the the, the clinical experience, they can observe uh, how the health system works. What are the 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 inequities between different population, what are the factors affecting this inequities. It's also important to, to like meet and talk with different people who work in health career. Not not just doctors and students, but maybe talking with, with workers, nurse, nurses and even patients if, if they, they can talk uh, they can speak the same language. It would be really uh, um, easy for the students to understand more about the healthcare system if they talk with different patients. Uh, meeting other exchange students as we said before in the upon arrival training, uh, when they are going to share their experiences and, and their uh, situa the different situations in their home countries. So it would be really inspiring for students to hear this ex kind of experience. Uh, learn the different rights uh, and capabilities and limits physicians and medical students have in, in this country. Try to join um, public health conferences, like some activities, some screening campaigns, even if they have like any IFMSA local campaigns, uh, 
uh, in SCOF or whatever, like um, in the university or in a public place. So it, it would be really amazing if they can join this kind of campaigns in order to understand more uh, the level of awareness uh, the population has in these countries. Uh, yeah, and like the, the the last slide about students. Uh, I'm sorry if this is getting like somehow boring, but it's it's this is like the most important part about how how can we proceed and how can we achieve this amazing strategy after after we had the introduction. So yeah, uh, for the evaluation form, um, uh, as we said, like we are going to have questions in our evaluation form regarding this uh, regarding this strategy. So the two proposed questions were, can you mention the major social determinants affecting population health and health care delivery? And the second one was, what, what the kinds of ca capacities and skills uh, needed uh, to strengthen the health system in the hosting country and overcome these uh, health inequities? So maybe if you have any more suggestions or comments, uh, you can send to us and we can try to uh, um, change them or, or maybe modify them. And uh, student exchange reports, which are actually the call is shared by uh, by Rodrigo, the uh, Scoopy or A for the Americas. So students can can be really um, important to share their reports about their experience with uh, with uh, with global health and learning global health in their in during their exchange program. It can be really uh, guiding for the new exchange students on on how they can benefit from this experience. Um, and yeah, like. The most important part, which is like the, the idea of this initiative, that students can think more critically about their roots as medical students when they go back to their country, and they can think how they can improve their healthcare system and how can they um, try to improve uh, the the health inequities and and try to achieve health equity in their communities. So yeah, uh, that's everything regarding the, these um, guidelines. Uh, we are also going to share it with you on the server so you can have more idea about, about each point. And we are also going to discuss this during the next General Assembly in Malta. Hopefully you will be there. Uh, and like, if you have any uh, ideas about uh, how can we um, improve any point or, or if you are going to um, Organize your pre departure training, your upon arrival training. Uh, please, please don't hesitate to contact uh, the Scopi International team, your regional assistant, um, to uh, guide you more on how can we um, improve your pre departure training and, and prepare your students more for this exchange program. And yeah, so now um, I, I will just uh, talk with, uh, leave, uh, give the mic to Claudel to talk more about. Uh, the pre departure training in, in IFMC Quebec, uh, as it's really interesting. Uh, she just told it me like uh, today, so maybe it would be really interesting uh, to hear and it can help you to improve the pre departure training in your countries. So, yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm just going to discuss it briefly. Um, for in, in IFMC Quebec, pre departure trainings have been something that we've worked on for the past. Um, couple of years and it's something that brought us really closer to the universities. Um, we have different programs when it turns to exchanges um, but one thing we really focus on is the importance of um, training our students before they depart um, to, uh, to, out, uh, to overseas um, and there's many things that we cover in those trainings. Um, usually they last for a day, but we also have a special program that lasts for 30 hours. And we're like, why are we discussing pretty party training for 30 hours? Well, guess it or not, there's many, many things that we, we, we can discuss. And one of them is the ethics of going abroad. So what does it entail for us as students when we travel to another country? What are our responsibilities? Are they the same um, as when we are back home? Can we do something? Can we do things differently? How can we really understand the the healthcare system that we are going to be put in? What is going to be our role as students? Is it different from the place we are to the place we will be? Um, what are the responsibilities of those students? Um, and how can we understand the way the people are being taken care of in health system? And we realize that even when we have students that are going from Quebec to France, um, even if some people would say those, con those, those part of the world are quite similar, they had a cultural shock and they, had, they said they would need a better understanding on how to be prepared to be in another healthcare setting. Um, so during our pre-departure training, we discussed that. We discussed cultural understanding. 
Um, and we, we discuss social determinants of health in terms of um, why people are getting sick and how the system, uh, what, what is shaping the healthcare system to really take care of, of the people. And we realize that students are, are, are going abroad with a different mindset that is very valuable and because they take care, um, they get more out of, of their exchanges. Um, and we also have a debrief when they come back so that they can discuss what they, what, what they learn um, and how they can apply that into their daily life as doctors in, in Canada. Um, and the really good thing is that we, we, we've come to offer really professional pre-departure trainings that are now officially recognized by university. So even for students that are not going, that are going to exchanges but not in an IFMC setting, they have to follow our pre-departure trainings. It's mandatory for them to be able to go abroad. Um, and, they, and so that way university know that we are up uh, up to date with, with the knowledge and literature about pre-departure trainings, ethics in global health, and global health challenges. Um, and, and so we, we've been able as well to, by doing so, to sort of gain uh, more trust from them in organizing different other uh, activities, and in, in getting support um, when we travel for IFMSC meetings, and etc. So this has been a very valuable experience for us. Um, and, and I mean, our NEOs, our NARIs um, are always there in GA to discuss what we do so that we can export our knowledge because I think it, it benefits not only students um, in Quebec, but the, the settings in which they go overseas. So I've been really brief about what we do. Um, but again, if you have any questions, I would suggest you, you contact directly people, um, the NEOs and NORIs in Quebec that can give you more um, programmations about how a, a, a program is, is structured. Um, but I really, I really see the benefit in, in doing so um, in, in all of the countries and even more by integrating um, core global health competencies such as social determinants of health into those trainings. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Claudel. Uh, thank you very much, Amma, as well. Um, thank you very much for um, this introduction to global health and the strategy and the initiative that we're taking in Scopi to implement global health within our exchanges. This is something that we have in our annual working plan, and it is a priority for us. Um, this is something that we are going to discuss again in uh, the upcoming March meeting in Malta. So I hope you guys will be there. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact any of us, any of the Scopy International team members, or even Claude, we are willing to answer all of your questions. Um, something else uh, I would like to add is a question that we received from uh, actually, the only question that we received from Ayad, who is the Neo of Lebanon, he actually asked a question that is not really related to the webinar, but still um, uh, going to we're going to tackle that one, which is that um, the students who are traveling right now to the Americas are really concerned about the Zika virus outbreak. So, to what extent will they be safe there? And I'm going to leave the floor to Rodrigo, who is this, our Scope Regional Assistant for the Americas. He's from Brazil. Um, so he's definitely uh, the one who can answer that. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks, Omar. And the Zika situation is definitely causing a lot of trouble, not only in Brazil, but in all the Americas itself, you know? Uh, there's a lot of things that we don't know yet about Zika, and you know that Researchers are making new discoveries each day, so we are not sure, sure how to deal with that yet. Um, they have discovered recently that Zika could be transmitted by saliva, um, and they are doing, doing st uh, studies, a lot of studies on that. I live in Recife, in Brazil, where it has been documented the greatest number of microcephalus babies uh, due to Zika in whole Brazil, and I have to admit that it has been a big mess. But the government and also the population are fighting together um, to overcome all this situation. It is really important also to mention that if you take the, 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 like the main precautions, like to use bug sprays and to wear clothes. clothes. I know that here in, around the tropical areas are really hot, but if you, you have to, to wear um, clothes to cover all your, 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 your bodies, 
and everything. And also respect the healthcare recommendations. Like, for example, do not travel to the endemic areas. If you're planning, if you're a girl, and you're planning to have uh, to build a family, to get pregnant in the pla in, in in some place in some uh, in a few days, in a few months, if you understand. As a suggestion for the Neos and for Leos, for all these group members that are watching us, I would suggest, for example, you have you you might have outgoings that came here to the to these areas recently during all this chaos. So why not to ask them to share their opinions through the, uh, the pre-departure training as Amr was saying, as uh, Claudel was saying as well. That's a suggestion. So that's it for the Americas. If you have any, 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 any question about it, don't hesitate to contact any one of us. Okay, and please come to Brazil, come to the Americas because we're cool. Yeah, it's, it's really funny, fun here. Okay, that's it, Omar. I leave the floor for you. Omar, your, your mic is off, so maybe you need to turn it on. Yeah, sure. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much, Rodrigo, for this uh, explanation. Um, guys, if you have any other question, please do not hesitate to contact us or uh, any of us. Um, I will leave the floor now to Amar and Claudel just for a quick goodbye message. Uh, thank you very much for watching this. It was a pleasure, and see you in two weeks in Malta. Bye. Uh, guys, just a point hey, guys, of information. Just a point of information. I, 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 I don't have it, all right? Let's see. Um, so, so I just want to say goodbye and thanks for welcoming me in this Scopy webinar. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that um, we're discussing more and more the importance of global health communities for medical students. Um, it's um, the only way to be like in three years from now and the impact it will have on thousands of students around the world. So I just want to congratulate Scopy for doing so. Um, and I hope SCORI will be able to join as well in their program um, and, and so that we can ensure that medical students get really the maximum out of the um, exchanges program that IFMSA has to offer. Um, so goodbye and don't hesitate you if you have any questions um, to contact any of us in the next couple of days. Okay, uh, thank you so much Claudel for joining us and thank uh, for all the Danaeus, Leaves and Scoopy members and even exchange students who joined us in this meeting. Uh, it was really amazing and we hope that we, we gave you the, the important information uh, that you need in order to proceed with our strategy. And as Omar said, we are going to meet very soon in, in, in Malta in two weeks so we can even discuss it more uh, in a more interactive way. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining us and don't hesitate to, to contact us if you have any questions. We're also going to send uh, this webinar uh, for you, so the people who miss it, they can watch it later on YouTube. So yeah, uh, thank you, and we are uh, we hopefully we can see you in our next webinar very soon, maybe after the March meeting. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.